A team with almost everything clicking right now looks to continue its newfound success, while another looks to wipe away a rough start and turn the page with some success of their own. It's game two of this 2023 Illini hockey campaign, as the Huskies of Northern Illinois have once again rolled into town. The former looking for a sweep and the latter looking to wipe away a rough start and string 60 good minutes together. Good evening everyone for the Big Pond in Champaign, Illinois and streaming live on the Illini Hockey Network. On the call, I'm George Corey and let's start tonight with the home team, these Illinois fighting Illini. Last night, almost everything was clicking. The veterans set the tone, the physicality returned and the young meshed with the old. Speed, chemistry and a pesky forecheck led to a shutout win. Tonight they look to do it again and they hope to capitalize on the man advantage, arguably the one blemish from last night's game. To the other side now and a team still looking for their first win now in the Northern Illinois Huskies. Saturday games have treated them better, a concept fans of last year's Illinois team are familiar with. The adjustments they need to make, shut down the transition game. You held firm of your identity on defense of shutting down the middle, but the three times Illinois did get into the high slot in transition. Odd man rushes, and it cost them three goals. So shut down the middle in transition, wait for Illinois to get set, and then you're right in your comfort zone, and then get your best players involved. Radon Evans was quiet last night. Micah Maldonado was hit heavily. They tried to take him out early. Robbie Zimmerman and Matt Martin tried to facilitate, but they were alone in that effort. And the spark plugs and team's best players were isolated on offense. Get them going, and you'll make this a closer battle. So to see if it will indeed be a closer battle, down to the ice we go now for starting lineups in the National Anthem. Brought to you by Skinner General Contractors. Skinner.com is the place to go to learn about the premier construction experience. Visit Skinner.com to learn more. And we visit public address announcer Nick Miner to kick things off.
Starting lineups again brought to you by Skender, the general contractors behind the premier construction experience. Visit Skender.com to learn more. And for Illinois, the same lineup as yesterday. And the notable, two notables, the two vets paired once again on defensemen, Joe Dorian and Luke Alpe. Two players who are starting to find their groove again after a down year last year. One of the many things that clicked for Illinois. Another one of those players finding his groove again. Ben Mazurik in goal. We talked about it at the beginning of the season. Was it going to be a platoon with Nolan Woodring like it was last year? Was Missouri going to get the Elliott Girth role of the starting goaltender for every game? And it turns out that it's the latter, earning it very well yesterday with 35 saves and a shutout performance. And on the other side, same lineup for Northern Illinois. Again, trying to get those signature players involved, Maldonado and Evans in particular, and Caleb Cross in his first ACHA game in goal. Great frame for a goalie, 6'3", 170. Two seasons in the NAHL on a save percentage north of 920. So he's a newbie to the ACHA, but not a rookie by any means to high profile hockey. As we are underway in the face off one by Evans taken to the far side and taken now to the other side. A nice pass by Clement. Clement getting close and a save quickly by Missouri. They're trying to test the Illinois netminder right away, but so's Peter Campisi on the other side. Campisi harassed on either end by two sticks and some more shoving as it's now taken to the far side point. Trying to keep it alive and instead shipping it in. Micah Maldonado, where it will now go around. Joe Dorian takes it. Bogdanoff and Campisi there as well. They can, at the very least, get it to neutral ice where it's now controlled by Northern Illinois. Quick line change, 30 seconds into the game. The second line on now for the Huskies. Led by, again, the top facilitator from last night, Matthew Martin. They are sending it in. They're sending it close to Missouri for the second time in roughly a minute of game play, as now Illinois delaying bringing it out of their own backyard. Atticus Helfer weaves through one man, weaves through another. Again, getting the start at left wing, the defenseman is. Very offensive-minded for a D-man. That's why they put him at left given the deficiencies it left this year for Illinois, and he was right at home yesterday, it felt that way. Having other ideas now and moving in, trying to make a man miss and bodying another man down to the ground with two hands. Jeff Shirky right in front. That does not go off the stick of Matt Martin. Again, the Saturday games have been kinder to Il Northern Illinois, and they're getting right to the net. Now three chances in the early going here for the Huskies. Gregory Ettingen in the second line in for Illinois. Feeds it to his brother David, who fans on a backhand shot. Gregory has to chase it down, where it's taken now by Nicholas Gonzalez. Another one of those players who has to get involved. Instead, he turns it over. Ettingen a shot, and a quick save made by the large framed Caleb Cross. Again, you just look at that stat alone. Two years in the NAHL, a save percentage north of 920. Not something you really see for goalies at any level of hockey. Third on the depth chart, but can certainly make an impact and, and be a much needed spark for this team. Again, Grant Goodson played relatively well yesterday, but it is Cross getting a start tonight. As Northern Illinois looks to clear, instead a pass goes right back to Anthony Verasi. He'll chip it in and doesn't bother to chase as both teams get a line change two minutes into the game. Fighting for it on the far side now. That's Nick Anderson in his first game back from injury. The junior defenseman feeds it on in, but it's taken now by Northern Illinois. Some more bodies collide in the neutral zone, having to chase that one down. The freshman defenseman, Harrison Slovic. Rodon Evans, the Alaska native, opposing him. Northern Illinois briefly able to keep it in, and now it's fed back into Robbie Zimmerman. Zimmerman fighting for it alongside Slovic, where it's cleared by Anderson. Taken now and chipped in once again by Verasi. Now over to the near side, as bodies collide. And that was a long-term collision there. For a long time, those two were down. That was Harrison Slovic and the captain, Evans. And play stopped because of it. Not just that, we may have a penalty. And we do. Some delayed interlocking of some sticks, some hands, something of the sort has put Harrison Slovic in the box for Illinois. And a very early power play here 
for their opponents from the north. Power play something all of the Northern Illinois faithful will be zeroing in on. 0 for 6 against Kent State last Saturday, and they've yet to find success since then. So this will be certainly a big tone setter. Can they continue going right to the net? As they did in the first minute of this game, they'll have two minutes of man advantage hockey. Meanwhile, back towards center ice, an Illinois player now is getting escorted. Rather, it was Luke Alpe, an Illinois player, escorting his trainer over to the Northern Illinois bench. Evans is on the ice, so it appears to be the Illinois trainer checking on someone else. As the power play begins, the faceoff won by Illinois and cleared promptly by Bogdanov. sigh of relief for Northern Illinois to see that that injury the Illinois trainer was tending to was not Rodon Evans. Evans instead in the game and taking it now an odd man rush on the near side. That's Porzondek with a shot that gets deflected and into the netting. 25 seconds having ticked off the clock on this early power play for Northern Illinois. Again, they have their top line on. Look for them to try and get those spark plugs involved. They were quiet last night, minus a few facilitators in Zimmerman and Martin. You're imagining Radon Evans has to be the first target. As fumbling that one and killing more time off the clock there is Micah Maldonado. Maldonado will try and make up for it now as he goes to his right and gains the zone. Rolling all the way around, but unable to hold on to it. Harassed successfully by Nathan Dash. Sent back to the point where Porzondek has it. Trades places with Zimmerman. Zimmerman going in. For the shot, save made right in front off the top by Mazurik. That one off the stick of Evans. Taken back now, Porzondek. Zimmerman getting in close. Back to Evans. They love to feed it to him right in front as that one went off the post. Two chances right in front for Radon Evans. Illinois has got to put a body there as he has gotten very close to a goal. He now has it in his own trap. He's always looking for a centering pass. Illinois doing a good job defending of that, and it's back to Zimmerman at the point. 40 seconds left on the power play. He trades places with the defenseman for Zondek. Looks to shoot and does off the pad of Missouri and another save. Illinois, only one shot on goal compared to five now for Northern Illinois as it's sent back to Zimmerman on the near side. Inside of 30 seconds on the power play. Zimmerman trades places with Evans. Evans to the point, circling all the way around to his left and to the far side. Feeds it in, dangerous deflection, too high. They're very deliberate, Northern Illinois, but they're also getting a lot of shots, a productive stride on this power play. Moving in now, Maldonado tried for a centering pass, nobody home. Last gasp here for the Huskies. It's Maldonado again circling back, has it deflected as we're back to five on five. Tried for a centering pass, Joe Dorian will retrieve that. Can Illinois clear it? Alexander Matviev with it now. He's harassed and shoved into the boards. More players fighting for it. Jim Franklin there for Northern Illinois, and ultimately the Illini will able to clear it. Line change for Illinois, an abbreviated one for the Huskies as well. Icing waved off as Ben Mazurik had to get active with the stick right there. Shoving another man into the boards is the captain Bogdanov. Feeding that one in off his knees, able to clear it, Alexander Matviev. Northern Illinois has mostly controlled the puck. And a much better start compared to yesterday's game. Moving it in, the speedy Keaton Peters. We didn't see him play yesterday, the second line defenseman, as the stick is down and Nick Anderson able to clear it for Illinois and subsequently in icing. Perhaps the biggest change from last night's game to tonight, Northern Illinois controlling the pace, controlling the ice time, keeping the puck for the most part in Ben Mazurik's backyard, and they're winning the neutral zone too. Five and a half minutes into the game, a face-off to Mazurik's left. Ultimately won by Martin, but taken by Illinois, able to clear that one, Alpi. Off the skate of Anderson. Anderson has it now, but an odd angle right in front. Second pass attempt does not go. 
two men right in front to feed it. The second one had two out of an angle to make anything happen. Able to clear it, take it through the legs of one, but now Joe Dorian has it and play is stopped. As that was Nicholas Gonzalez, who just came back from the locker room. We just received word that it was indeed he who was being checked on by the Illinois trainer. So he is back on the bench, a good sight to see for the second line centerman for Northern Illinois. And now another chance off of getting Gonzalez back, it's Atticus Helfer into the box and another chance at a power play. So looking to pick up right where they left off, deliberate, but also a very productive first power play. They're looking to do it again on the man advantage. Centering pass does not go off the stick of Evans. In the diamond formation right now, the man in the middle is Micah Maldonado. They're trying to find him. Illinois doing a good job defending. As now Evans has to redirect it over to Zimmerman. Call on Helfer was a hold. And a minute 30 left for him in captivity. Taking that one now, poor Zondek going in. That one off the rafters of the arena as that one jutted up. The shot too high to catch any netting or iron. So two and a half very productive minutes for Northern Illinois up a man. A great sight to see. Again, the Saturday games have been kinder to them. First last week against Kent State and now in this series against Illinois. Face off one by Gregory Ettingen. Nathan Thin Dash has to chase that one down with Zimmerman on his sixth. Zimmerman able to keep it in and find Maldonado. Zimmerman has it now at the point, sent back around to Porzondek. They're back in the diamond formation with Micah Maldonado, the man in the middle, as a bad pass there, and Porzondek has to chase that one down with help from his netminder. Line change for Illinois. And you have to imagine that this first line for Northern Illinois is tired. They've played almost three straight minutes on the, for the two full minutes of the power play, and they're on again. This front forward line for Northern Illinois. Again, Maldonado, Evans, and Clement. Zimmerman there as well. So Zimmerman now moving in. Great placement right there by Harrison Slovic. That shot went off his leg. He'll look to do it again. Instead, pass into Evans. Evans with a great angle. Right in front. Missouri gets bodied. Looked like almost he was cross-checked there as he went down. And this may cost two minutes in turn for Northern Illinois. Missouri sharing a word with the linesman as it's a full line change, forwards and defense for Northern Illinois. And instead of a penalty for what it looked to be a cross check on Missouri, it's a face off in neutral ice. 30 seconds left of the man advantage for Northern Illinois. So again, they've done very well on the power play. They've been deliberate but productive. First with the diamond formation and then with Rodon Evans having a clear lane right in front on that near side. Great play right there by Luke Alpi to clear it and kill some more time. On the near side, the first time that top line has been taken out, it's now the second line. And that will seem to be the end of this power play. Quick pass now with two seconds left. Gonzalez a shot and a save made by Mazurik into the netting. That was a great pass there from Caleb Cross all the way to Gonzalez on the near side. That gave Northern Illinois one last chance in the power play. But if Illinois gives them another chance on the penalty as they've already done twice, it's a balancing act between defending against that doorstep shot from Radon Evans and trying to deny the shot in the high slot from Micah Maldonado. We're back to full strength with 12 minutes left in period number one. Nathan Dash tries to clear it. Instead, it's caught on the far side. Anthony Varasi there. Illinois able to clear it. A one on three, and Nick Anderson loses that. Northern Illinois in control of it now. Varasi again harassing a man as it's taken now to the near side. Jim Franklin. Some great interior immediate passing, but Keaton Peters loses control of it. He's harassed along the boards now. 
Patrick McDonough looked to have it. Instead, Northern Illinois with a man right in front trying to shove that one in was Brandon Weitzel, but to no avail. Anderson has it now, nearly falls down, able to hold on to it and clear. A two on two now, trying to shove that one in is Varasi, getting some increased playing time here on the third line. Nick Anderson right there looking for a centering pass as that one went off of two sticks. Again, there's Varasi with that shot. Sent back on and around behind the trapezoid. Keaton Peters with it now. Atticus Helfer ready to body him into the boards. Northern Illinois yet to clear the puck and it cost them. Right in front here, Bogdanoff with a backhand chance. Diving to protect that one. What a play by Peters. Diving, a full body dive to prevent that backhand wide open shot from Bogdanov in an area where we saw Northern Illinois struggle, clearing the puck and transition shots right in front. And Keaton Peters might have just saved his team a goal. Moving in now, that's Alex Leskai with his first minutes as that one nearly got close. Right in front there to try for it was Peter Campisi. Back in the trapezoid, Illinois winning some one on two puck battles as that's pulled out into the high slot. Dangerous chance now. Illinois able to keep it alive. The Huskies not able to clear it as it's Atticus Helfer now, but another diving black sweater restricts that shot. Great defense here, responding to shots, but they've yet to be able to clear the puck until now where Illinois will control. Alec Bogdanov chips it in, chases after it, taking that one now, Ethan Koval. Koval waits patiently, able to clear it. Thought about going through one man there. Tried to get too fancy with it, and it gives Illinois a chance. Slap shot from Gregory Ettingen does not go. As that's a three on three puck battle pulled out now. Matt Viva's shot. And great placement again by the Northern Illinois defense. This time, Servin Anderson as he gets bodied by Matt Viva in response. Great placement on these shots. A great adjustment made from Friday to Saturday for the Huskies. Illinois not letting them stop though, is taking that now Ettingen and a glove save off the glove there. Denying that one, Caleb Cross. And another shot does not go. That one did manage to get close off the stick of Harrison Slovic. Luke Alpe waits, the icing waved off. Now it's Illinois looking to clear the puck. Ettingen able to do so. Sends it on around. It's David Ettingen who flicks it for a line change for Illinois. Northern Illinois thought about moving quickly there, but waiting is Gonzalez. Pass too hot to handle, and it ends up right on net for Missouri. But what a sequence there. Illinois' turn to apply constant pressure in, and what great plays by the Northern Illinois defense. Keaton Peters and Servan Anderson in particular, and a few full body blocks, a few diving blocks as well. Credit to Northern Illinois for responding, but credit to Illinois as well for keeping up the pressure as they look to do that here. It's Verasi with a shot, still alive right in front and bottled up. And some more jawing afterwards. It looked to be one of the Ettingen brothers who was trying to stick that one in as it was still alive in front. The stick made contact with the glove of Cross and the black sweaters did not like that at all. Yet to see who it was. Instead, it appears to be Patrick McDonough, the man who tried to shove that stick in and shove that second chance back past the blue paint. The linesman signals a word to John O'Pilka, and Illinois looks to continue their pressure applying ways. McDonough wins the faceoff, gets bodied a little bit afterwards. Great pickoff right there of the pass from Northern Illinois as they have numbers the other way. Forced to the outside by Dash, that's Gonzalez. Gonzalez sends it in, shot right there, and that does not go. High save there from Missouri, got the stick of poor Zondek. No penalty called right there as twirling and twisting, helicoptering like John Elway was Anthony Verasi. 
Joe Dorian has to chase that one down. Pour Zondek on his six. And Illinois able to clear. So seven minutes, 30 seconds left in the first period. A lot of time from the front line in particular, the top forward line on the ice for Northern Illinois as the linesman sharing a word with Radon Evans this time. But a lot of time for that top line on the ice, particularly on those power plays. They were on for three and a half minutes of the four minutes of man advantages that they've had in this first period. It's an interesting strategy to try and get out in front. You've given up a lot of leads, or you've, you've put yourself in a lot of deficits, is another save from Missouri, in the first three games. So it's an interesting strategy to try and get out in front, but we all wonder, come the third period, will that come back to bite them? Yet to be seen as it's Maldonado taking the face off along with Bogdanoff, won by the former, and sent on and around to that far side corner. Maldonado with it now, looking to reset. Instead, he will send it all the way around where Keaton Peters has to chase it down. Line change for the Illini. As some intermediate passing allows the Huskies to gain the zone. Not a lot going there though, as a two on one and the two won that battle. For Illinois, however, a turnover right in front, and that shot does not go. Backhand chance from Maldonado, all for naught, and he had a pretty big opening on that near side. Great ability from Evans there to make something out of nothing, just couldn't convert, Maldonado couldn't on the other end, and it's Illinois now being a little bit rusty with the ability to clear the puck. Nice pass in front, and the shot from Evans does not go. That time it was Maldonado feeding it to him instead of the other way around. So the big names starting to get involved for Northern Illinois, just haven't been able to cash in. Pass right in front to Edmondson, he scores! And what a backbreaker for a team in Northern Illinois that had been playing incredibly well up to that point. Maybe one or two times they had had trouble clearing the puck defensively, yet the second time there they weren't able to clear it and out of nowhere Ettingen able to cash in. So out of nowhere, and again what a backbreaker that must be. They have to forget about it now. They've played a great game thus far. Just tune that up a little bit. Instead, it's Illinois with an increased physicality here. Matt Vive taken down as he tried to make something happen. Another collision inside between Alpi and Martin. And some more jawing after the fact between those two. The door has opened to the penalty box. Door has opened to the box. Yet to see who it is. Only four skaters on the ice right now for Northern Illinois. And the call has been made. It's Evan Rizutko. Again, his night ended 10 minutes into the game yesterday. So now Illinois with a chance for a power play. Not what you want to happen if you're Northern Illinois. You've been playing a great game. You've got to keep your heads about you. As Illinois looks to add on in what would be a repeat of last night. Cleared very nicely, though, chasing that one down Gonzalez. Alpi feeds it in. That's David Ettingen, nearly an overpass for Joe Dorian. And all this is doing is killing more time on the penalty kill for Northern Illinois. Taking that one, Dorian. Dorian on the near side, that's Campisi. Campisi moves to his right. Great navigation of the stick, but the shot does not go. Another full body block as Dorian tried for the centering attempt that could not go. A lot of full body blocks right in front. They're resorting to multiple ways, multiple methods here to prevent Illinois from scoring in the middle and in the high slot in particular. 
as we're inside of a minute on the power play and five left in the first period. Again, the goal coming from Gregory Ettingen, the second leading scorer for this team last year and perhaps the MVP of this team last year, Gregory Ettingen. He's holding on to that one now, Helfer. Helfer trades places with Dash. Dash thought about shooting instead of the near side. Ettingen and Dash play catch. That's now Helfer. Helfer, too hot there. Ettingen has to chase it down. 15 left on the power play. Ettingen in. Resets. Back to him. Dash playing catch with Ettingen. They're continuing to do so. Four seconds left to do it as Helfer has it now. Dash going in. Last chance for Ettingen. And another full body block. As slow to get up. Still slow to get up. On the near side, let's take a look and see who it is. Wait, was that a block shot? It appears to be. We don't want to make the judgment too early, but you see an inkling of a four on the back of the jersey there. So the indication is perhaps Keaton Peters, but no sign yet. The fourth or fifth full body block diving on all fours for Northern Illinois. And they've played a great game defensively, but it appears to be a Pyrrhic one at that. As it is indeed Keaton Peters. Peters already with a play in this game that saved his team a goal. Being helped by three other Huskies back to the bench. Did not play last night, but in 17 minutes of hockey has already made his presence felt. Very much so. So that perhaps throws a wrench into the defensive plans of Brad Stoffers' squad. They are down a defenseman, a second line defenseman in Peters for the time being, who has again played a lot this season and has done very well this game. So who will step up on the defensive end for Northern Illinois, particularly on those full body blocks? And another factor to consider that John O'Pilka might be looking at in film come Monday or Tuesday is Nathan Dash right in the middle of the ice right there, separating Atticus Helfer and Gregory Ettingen. That connection was very strong last year on the power play. And anytime they tried to pass it, they had to go through Dash. As Bogdanov trying to make something out of nothing, Campisi sends a man down to the ground. And a delayed penalty coming for that shove from Peter Campisi. Another man down, another hit. And this has gotten very chippy very quickly. Peter Campisi shoved a man down. A few seconds went by, another vicious hit. Independent of that Campisi shove in that far side corner. And you have another Illinois player down as well off of that tussle. It appears to be the captain Bogdanov who's a little slow, but again, all of the attention focused on the Husky that is still down, still down on that far side. Gets up and help to the ice. The same players helping their teammate to the ice for roughly the second time in two minutes. We've yet to see who it is. He is now moving, this player, he is now moving towards center ice. It is the captain, Radon Evans. Wow, what a statement of a hit. As Evans is getting loose around the middle of the ice. The alternate captain, Luke Marks, and the Illinois captain, Alec Bogdanoff, sharing some words with the linesman as well as they convene at the scorer's table. Evans appears to be okay. You saw for a brief moment there him make the talking symbol as if Illinois was jawing a lot as he's currently talking with his line mates at center ice. And now he goes back to the bench. So the shove from Campisi that drew a penalty. So Peter Campisi will at the very least be in the box with three and a half minutes left in the first period. And then another big hit on Evans who 
was motionless for roughly about a minute, but ultimately is able to get up. The best player for this Northern Illinois squad. Again, a statement of a hit, you could argue. Applied on the captain and the team's best player. So four minutes have been put on the clock for Campisi's time in the box. No ejection as of yet for any player. Won't be surprised if we do see one. So Campisi in the box, at least for now, for three minutes and 33 seconds and then 27 more seconds to start the second period. The linesman still talking this one over at the scorer's table. <laughs> Brad Stoffers is using this as a time just to take a timeout, to reel in his players. John Opilka is doing the same. And for Northern Illinois fans, you're, you're recalling that timeout that he took very early in the game. They were down 4-1 to against Kent State. That was a Saturday game, too, which has favored them well. And again, that timeout late in the first period seemed to turn things around for them in that game. They didn't end up winning it, but they got very close. They played much better. The personnel adjustments started to click. And so, although he's not charged a timeout here, a similar situation for Brad Stoffers trying to unite his team. And let's see if it has similar effects for Northern Illinois. The linesman now sharing words with the captain Bogdanoff and the alternate marks. Evans is still on the ice. Sharing some words with his line mate right at the blue line. And the linesmen are breaking down the rulings with each team. Northern Illinois in particular getting loose right now. Illinois staying still. This would be a big momentum turner for Northern Illinois. Again, the timeout by the timeout in that Saturday game. And now Brad Stoffers again talking things over with his guys. Once again, as we're three and a half minutes left here in the first period, a goal from Gregory Ettingen against a goalie in Caleb Cross, who has played very well thus far, but a lot of jawing, a lot of hits, a lot of tussles, a lot of shoulder moves, and maybe some elbows, you could argue. It was a shove from Peter Campisi, and it has now been five minutes. A minute has been added, so a major penalty assessed to Campisi. So five minutes for that original shove. As the faceoff will appear to be to the left of Ben Mazurik. No other players have entered the box. It's just Campisi. As now John Opilka is talking things over with the linesman. It appears to be Justin Yang in the middle of the frame as well. So Yang will enter the box. Unclear yet if that's in place of Campisi. Three men in the box for Illinois. It appears to be Justin Yang and another player who will be serving incidental minor penalties along with the five minute for Campisi. So five on four for the next five minutes for Campisi for that shove and for instigating what has been the chippiest moment of this game just a short time ago. So a five minute power play that will continue into the second period and a golden opportunity for Northern Illinois to tie this game. It is the top line on the ice right now. You have to imagine they're getting very tired with a lot of this ice time. They played almost about 10, 11 minutes when all is said and done in this period. 
Atticus Helfer able to take that away. He gets checked with the stick, but taking that now, a two on two. Pass too hot for Helfer to handle as Evans poked at Bogdanoff on the far side. Inside of three minutes left in the period and four left on the major. Maldonado shoves that into the far side. Helfer fights for it alongside with Porzondek. Porzondek gets hit into the boards, but it's taken out now by Evans and he looks to reset. That's Robbie Zimmerman. Zimmerman turning around, good defense there by Slovic. Crouched down to prevent a shot. Zimmerman going in, has Maldonado behind him. And feeds it to him. Two minutes, 15 seconds left in the period as a shot from Maldonado right into the bread basket of Missouri. Missouri perfect thus far on 10 shots. So again, Northern Illinois looks to pick up right where they left off before that first Illinois goal. Deliberate, but still very, very productive on the power play. They're entering roughly their sixth or seventh minute of man advantage hockey in this period alone. Keaton Peters with it now. He's back into the game after taking a hard hit. Great to see. Peters has it now. Looking to delegate, he gives it up, expecting a man to be there, and Alexander Matviev takes it away. That's one he's gonna have back, and all Matviev can do is kill some time. He's rushing up the ice now, it's Peters, looking to avenge that, instead he nearly gives it up. Taking it now, that's Jason Clement. Clement circling back, now back to the far side point. Clement has it now inside. Looking for a seam pass, Peters playing catch, a lot of quick passing, and again, swallowed up by Missouri. Again, deliberate but productive. We talk about it in the context of a lot of NHL teams, very slow, very deliberate on the power play. They'll pass it around, they'll pass it around, they'll be slow, and they'll usually only end up getting two or three great chances on the power play. Northern Illinois has managed to be as deliberate but they've gotten probably twice, maybe three times that amount on one power play. There's another shot right there. That one off the stick of Martin and a save by Missouri. The Huskies able to keep it alive. Martin with it on that far side, feeds it in right away where it's taken now, looking for a centering pass. Is Clement and he'll feed it back out to the point. A minute left in the period, two and a half left on the minor that will again bleed into the start of the second period. Keaton Peters now has Clement. And Clement looking for a centering pass, feeds it right in front as that one got high. Illinois still looking to clear it, they cannot. Back in front, a shot, dangerous deflection and an open net. Still alive, and that one shoved back over to the far side. Looking to clear it, David Ettingen, he cannot. Play whistle dead, meanwhile. And the hand goes up. And that is not good for Illinois. Into the box, Harrison Slovic for the second time this evening. So there is two minutes and 11 seconds left on the minor to Campisi, and now two minutes on the penalty to Slovic. Five on three for two minutes with perhaps the only saving grace for Illinois, the fact that there's 44 seconds left in this first period. So five on three for two minutes, with roughly 40 seconds left in the period for Northern Illinois. What better time than now to have the top line, despite the fact that they've played a lot of time early. Northern Illinois getting in close with that five on three and able to deflect that there was Bogdanoff, but back to Marks at the top. Marks a shot, that one off the foot of Bogdanoff. 20 seconds left in the period. Again, this will bleed over into the second. Another shot right into the breadbasket of Missouri. He is a player that particularly over these last two games has responded very well to a lot of players being in front of the ice, right being in front in the crease. Not necessarily, they're not necessarily trying to screen him. It's really the Illinois defenders that have set up shot there particularly on some five on fours that have been tried to deny Northern Illinois the ability to attack the middle. Again, no choice to do that here on a five on three as a shot goes and a full body block right there from Luke Alpe. 
Great defense here from Illinois. Five seconds left in the period. Bogdanov trying to clear it and does to round out period number one. And that will do it for the first period. A minute and 20 seconds left of the man advantage for Northern Illinois on the other side of the second period. A great performance for Northern Illinois in the first, but a very Pyrrhic one at that with multiple players going down and another one down as we speak in front of the Illinois net. Still yet to move his head at all and now moving his upper body is starting defenseman Alec Porzondek. Porzondek rises, and again, it's Zimmerman and Maldonado that will this time help him to the locker room. So again, a great performance, but a Pyrrhic one at that for Northern Illinois. The Illini have applied a heavy, heavy physical game in these first two. So after one period, the lone goal coming from Gregory Ettingen and Northern Illinois in the midst of a five on three for one minute and 20 seconds to open the second period. We will be back to start the second period in roughly about 20 minutes. Quite an entertaining battle. This has become quite a physical battle with both teams attacking the other in their respective zones. We'll be back for the second intermission after this.
Back now for the second period of action and of the first period that was very physical and dominated on both ends of the ice. Some neutral zone play indeed, but Northern Illinois on the power play in particular, about 10 minutes of man advantage hockey was very productive. They were deliberate, but they were productive. And for Illinois, they too established a lot of pressure in on in his first game, Caleb Cross, the netminder for Northern Illinois. Yet the Huskies were able to respond defensively with a lot of full body blocks. And at multiple times did it cost them with three different players going down at three different times. Two of them have come back into the game and have played, but we've yet to see the status of Alec Porzondek. Porzondek is indeed on the ice, ready to go, joining Keaton Peters and Radon Evans as the two other players injured in this game, right back at it for Northern Illinois. And again, they will have a minute 20 of five on three hockey to open the second period. A minute 17 left on Slovic's penalty and then a minute 27 before the five minute major to Camp Easy expires. It's Bogdanoff and it's Evans underway for the second period. Won by Evans, but tossed in there by Atticus Helfer to kill some more time. Again, it's the top line who have played quite a lot of time, 10 to 11 minutes of ice time in that first period. A lot of it on the power play for Northern Illinois. And again, we'll see if that comes back to bite them in the third, if they get tired. Zimmerman has it now. That's Robbie Zimmerman with it. Over to Peters. It appears to be a 4-1 overload with Peters as the lone defenseman. Five on three. He manages to get very close with a shot. A rebound chance. That does not go. A lot of deflections right in front, but too far to one side for Northern Illinois. They'll reset with 40 seconds left on the five on three. Zimmerman, Peters, and that does not go. Play stopped as it appears the net dislodged. Again, Northern Illinois has done a great job applying pressure on the power play. They're right there with the Illini. They have 30 seconds left of a two-man advantage in order to capitalize here. They've been a little quicker to start this second period than they were in the first period. Again, deliberate but productive. As taking it now, Zimmerman looking to shoot. Quick shot right there, and that is deflected back into the netting off the stick of Micah Maldonado. And the Northern Illinois faithful not happy of that deflection maybe a high stick is what they wanted but no dice and now 17 seconds left on the five on three 17 on the five on three and then 10 more after that before Campisi comes out of the box it feels like he's been in the box for about 45 minutes Zimmerman with it now trades places with Peters 10 seconds left on the five on three Peters team pass that does not go Deflected in front, great saves as he's been challenged multiple times and continuing to play flawless hockey is Ben Mazurik. Out of the box comes Slovic, five on four, and now five on five is out of the box, Campisi and Illinois able to kill off a staunch power play attack. Northern Illinois has had the advantage in shot totals tonight. A lot of them again coming on that power play. It was Northern Illinois giving the Illini a lot of chances to cash in on the power play last night. Now tonight, just the opposite. Face off one taken over to the near side. That's Anderson now, killing time, killing time, and now he'll send it across for a clear. Off the skate of Ettingen, that ends up costing him for the time being, but able to take it away, his brother Gregory. Gregory Ettingen with it now, he gets tripped going in, and a delayed penalty coming. And some more jawing after that. Taking a tumble there was Gregory Ettingen. And right on cue, the first power play of the afternoon for Illinois.
Into the box again for the second time tonight, that's Evan Rosutko. This has been a weekend he'll want to forget, getting tossed after 10 minutes in last night's game, and now two penalties already in this one. Illinois wins the faceoff, it's pulled out to Nathan Dash at the point, center ice. Dash moving in now, finds Ettinger. Again, very interesting look as now Bogdanov picks it off and gives it to Dash. Helfer and Ettingen are separated by Nathan Dash up front. That's been a common connection we saw at the tail end of last year. Helfer and Ettingen, a lot of chemistry on the power play, and they're separated up front by Nathan Dash. As that shot went off the body of Jason Clement, Illinois will look to reset. Bogdanov able to handle that, and Atticus Helfer looks to get it back to the point. Now delays, now delays, now looking to go in, looking for a centering pass as he sent around the trapezoid. And we'll give it back to the near side for Gregory Ettingen. A minute 20 left on the power play. Ettingen plays catch with Dash. Ettingen looking to go in off the skate of Bogdanov. And that errant pass ends up costing him and gives Northern Illinois a chance, a two on two. Going in now, Evans, and had that one off of another stick. Rizuko in the box for 60 more seconds. As Illinois looking to get it in, and they do. Ettingen will kill some time and have his line mates join him. Nathan Dash, now Atticus Helfer. Helfer thought about shooting and he does, it goes high. Ettingen back with it now, resetting. They're trying for the man in the middle, that's Bogdanov off the stick, that does not go. Ettingen calling for it as Dash has it on the far side. Dash with it now, Ettingen calling for it again. He's playing catch with Helfer, doesn't appear to see him. And that time it is saved once again by a man who's played a very good game in Caleb Cross. He's had to move quickly. Illinois has applied a lot of pressure on him. He has played a good game, but he's also been helped out heavily by his defensemen. Twenty-five seconds left of man advantage hockey for Illinois. It's the third line out now with two defensemen this time instead of the usual 4-1 overload. One of those men, Luke Alpi, has it now. Alpi looking to go in. Moves to his right, applies the pressure right in front in the low slot and unable to get stick to puck there was Nick Anderson. <laughs> Illinois looking for a rush. They do get it into that near side corner as Rizutko comes out of the box and onto the bench. Tried to find a man right in front. That was Verossi, could not. Illinois still able to hold on to it. Anderson trying to get it through traffic. Instead, it goes out to the point, and fanning on that one is Slovic. McDonough applies a hit that will give his line mates some more time to corral the puck. Still unable to handle it, though, as it's chased into that near side corner. Both teams looking for it, trying to keep it in there with Zimmerman. He could not. Zimmerman still has it now, spearheading that second line. Feeds it in, nobody there to get it, and Luke Alvey will have to chase it down. Alpi delayed trying to corral that one. It'll cost his team the possession as Servan Anderson chases it down. Zimmerman now. That's Anderson with it. Sends it towards the crease, but not close enough. Fresh off the bench, that's Gonzalez. Gives it right to an orange sweater, and Illinois moving now with three on two is chipping that in for a line change. Odd decision there, given it was a three on two, but McDonough chips it in, and a fresh set of bodies on the ice for Illinois. Five minutes having gone by here in a scoreless second period. Again, the lone goal coming in the middle of the first from Gregory Ettingen. Illinois chips it in, icing waved off as that rolls all the way around for Frank Adante. Adante with it now, gets hit as that one corrals to the trapezoid. Aiden Taylor with it now, has it taken away. A patient clear and one that nearly cost them the possession. It might end up doing so as that goes in front. It does cost them the possession and it cost them a goal. The first in roughly 100 minutes of hockey for this Northern Illinois squad. And that time it was a weakness of the Huskies that manifested itself in the Illini. The inability to clear the puck. Joe Dorian slowed down. There with him was Nathan Dash. A little bit of a restrained puck clearing attempt. It ended up costing them a lot more than the possession. And just like that, a team that has played a very good game 
does what any good team does, takes advantage of the opponent's mistakes, and Northern Illinois has tied it up. Moving quickly now, they're looking for more as the goal scorer tried to send it in, a save made by Missouri. That goal appeared to be Matt Martin, although unclear if it has been credited to him. Martin applying the pressure right then and there. And again, we talked about it. How can you get your best players involved? A lot of those best players were silent in last night's shutout for Northern Illinois. Maldonado's taken a lot of shots. Zimmerman's facilitated a lot. Evans has been in and around and through this entire game, is trying to get to the net, but at on angle, still right there is Matt Veeve. He gets shoved, he doesn't like it. A lot of altercations at the net. Not the first time we've seen that tonight and probably not the last. Matt Veeve got a little bit too close to Caleb Cross. And line changes respectively for both teams. So again, those really six players, those top two forward lines where Don Evans has been in the middle of everything tonight. Robbie Zimmerman has been a great facilitator. And the man who appears to have scored that first goal, Matt Martin, the MVP of Northern Illinois from last night continuing to have a productive weekend. Vying for that one is McDonald. It's pulled out to Campisi. Campisi will chase that one around as Illinois looks to gain possession. The goal has since been credited instead to Nicholas Gonzalez. Martin with the assist rather than the goal. And subsequently an offside. So his second of the year, Nicholas Gonzalez. And it ties this game five minutes in to the second period. The face off in neutral ice pulled out quickly by Bogdanov. He tries to make something out of nothing. And back the other way now is tumbling around. That's Clement. Illinois able to control it. They're a lot quicker when they have the puck in their own trapezoid. Probably the word spread around the bench after that recent goal as Bogdanov takes that around now in his own corner. Sent on back around. Now it's Northern Illinois looking to clear it. Again, a game that has made quick work of the neutral zone as we now have 13 minutes left in the second period. A lot of time spent, respectively, on either side of the ice. Deflection off the skate of the linesman that ends up right in the high slot. No one there for Illinois to corral it and they'll have to clear it back the other way. Now Northern Illinois looking to do the same. It's Evans with it now. Line change for Illinois. The captain Evans trying to move quickly and take advantage of that fact. A two on four goes through the legs of one and that shot goes wide. Making something out of nothing there and looking very pretty while doing so. As back to neutral ice looking to clear and instead it's brought on around to the far side. Bogdanov tried for the hit. Instead he ended up eating ice as Servant Anderson with it now. A man on his sixth, that's Nick Anderson. Again, the veteran defenseman returning in his first game from injury. Anderson still right in the middle of the fray as he applies a hit along the boards. Alongside Anthony Verossi for Illinois. Now to the near side, looking to clear it, and they do. Taking that one is Zimmerman. Zimmerman moving quickly on the near side. Zimmerman moving quickly now. looking to clear. Great work by Zimmerman to keep that one alive. Again, the front line on the ice for a lot of time. They've swallowed up probably about half of the ice time in this game with 12 minutes left here in the second period.
Jim Franklin with it. Horzondek calling for it on the near side. Has a lane instead. Franklin moving to his right. Taking that one now in, going down. That's Zimmerman. As the puck still seems to be on his person where it's taken now by Evans. Able to be cleared at the very least, but kept alive. Evans with it now. Northern Illinois looking to make something happen. Maldonado with it. Now back to the point. Franklin and Porzondek. Seam pass in front, has a lane. Now Maldonado off the post. Had he not fanned on that, that might have been goal number two. Looking to move quickly, but fanning on a shot of his own is cross. Nonetheless, still trying to make something happen there is Evans. Right in front, not able to receive that centering pass. And back to the far side as Illinois looks to clear, and they do. About maybe three inches the difference from Northern Illinois having their first lead of the season. Missed offside call right there as it's taken back by Gonzalez and back over to the point. That's once again Evans trying to keep it in. Now holding on to it, Brandon Weitzel. Back to the near side, Weitzel looks to control of it. Now it's Porzondek to the far side. Shot that got deflected three ways from Tuesday, but it does not go. Slovic harassed on the near side. And Illinois looks to clear, and they do. Alpi looks to send it in. Anderson thought about a centering pass, but fanned on it. And that gives Northern Illinois possession. Halfway down here in the second period, the Huskies have managed to tie it up off some sloppy play from Illinois in their own trapezoid. Gonzalez credited with the goal, Helfer trying to get it one of his own. Still able to navigate the puck through traffic, rebound chance, still alive, still in front, fighting for that one, Nathan Dash. Illinois has gotten their sticks, their bodies, their gloves, practically everything right in the crease of Caleb Cross and multiple times tonight that has caused the Northern Illinois faithful and players to get behind their netminder. Nathan Dash and Sasha Matviv both have been right in front of the goal there, causing a lot of trouble. and perhaps being the impetus for some skirmishes as well as Dash's shot goes wide. Illinois looking to keep it alive. Pesky play from Campisi, but he can't keep the possession alive. Sending it across on one on two is Evans. Evans trying to keep it alive, he cannot, but it's brought back around to Jim Franklin. Franklin a one on two, he's got to clear it quickly, and it goes past Sasha Matviv. Joe Dorian with it now, looking to clear, kept to the outside. Again, that's the strength of this Northern Illinois team. Franklin looking to clear now, instead sends it over to the far side. A long pass that goes off the stick of Evan Rizzuto. Joe Dorian now, as Rizzuto applies the pressure on him. Dorian and Rizzuto go down as that one manages to get close. Still alive near the crease. And able to be cleared, sent back to the near side, sent all the way around. McDonough trying to chase that one down and stave off icing, but he will not. Joe Dorian and Evan Rizutko went back and forth just to the left of Ben Mazurik. Both players shoved each other down, gave each other some hits on their respective ends of the ice. One of the many skirmishes that has gone on in this game tonight. As we now have eight minutes left in the second period, it's Jim Franklin sharing a word with the linesman at center ice as a faceoff to the right of Mazurik. McDonough and Gonzalez. Gonzalez won that one quick shot that ends up deflected right in front and swallowed up by Missouri. A line change for Illinois now. And it's the second line again. No surprise to see the brothers David and Gregory playing together. One a natural passer, one a natural shooter from that left side. 
and the electric and streaky Sasha Matviev, the team's top centerman, anchoring things up. That is a very strong second line. You look at it as that one went right in front and the net dislodged. Matviev again right in the crease as he dived for a second goal. These players certainly giving it their all. We've seen a few Northern Illinois players go down. We've seen a few Illinois players absolutely get leveled by their own actions, whether it be Dorian, Helfer, or Matviev. There's gonna be a lot of ice supplied in both locker rooms tonight and tomorrow. But again, that line of the Ettingen brothers and Matviev, you could easily make the case that it's better than the top line for this team, although Atticus Helfer has been right at home at left wing. The offensive-minded D-man has been right at home up front. And Alec Bogdanov has earned his captaincy slot with two goals last night. On his knees, keeping that possession alive! And a goal comes from Alpi! What a play by Gregory Ettingen. He's been alive on both goals, on his knees, to keep that possession alive, sends it back to the near side, and Alpi goes top shelf on the 6'3 netminder, Caleb Cross. Hard to do for a goalie that's 6'3 in Cross, but he sends it to that top shelf corner, the really the only place you can get for a goalie with that frame. So a great pass, a great ability to keep that alive by Ettingen, earned that assist, and Alpi put it right where he needed to for the goal. Illinois gets one back, it's now two to one with eight minutes left in the second period. Is sending that one around and taking it now. Looking to clear it, Northern Illinois is, and that goes all the way on goal. Joe Dorian with it now. Dorian gets hit into the boards. Looking to clear it is Nathan Dash. He sends it to the blue line where it is cleared. Pass too hot to handle for David Ettingen. Still able to keep it alive though, albeit an odd angle. In that near side corner, trying to keep it alive, it's brought out to Nathan Dash. Dash with a shot, goes wide. And moving quickly now, Alec Bogdanov harassing a man, and it costs Illinois the possession. Gregory Ettingen, the man with the assist, and already with a goal in this game, moving quickly, finds his brother David. David with a shot off the stick of Cross and into the netting. So again, goals in this period from Nico Gonzalez and Luke Alpi. And Illinois has retaken the lead. So now really the momentum still up for grabs, although Illinois playing with an increased tempo given that most recent goal. The momentum still really up for grabs in a third period in which Northern Illinois historically on the season. They've been their most comfortable in that last frame. So you could make the case that there's a slight advantage to them, but again, the momentum's still really up for grabs. There's no really other way to phrase that, and Northern Illinois looking to cash in here is moving in that Zimmerman. Zimmerman, backhand chance, fans on it, still manages to get it close though as it's sent around now to that far side corner. Matthew McDonald fighting for it. Trying to clear it is Atticus Helfer. He punches at it, pokes at it, has it now. Waiting patiently, sends it across to Peter Campisi. Campisi with a lane, but now resorted to the outside. Centering pass right to a black sweater. That's Keaton Peters. But the shove of the stick by Helfer keeps it in momentarily. Zimmerman and now Franklin. And Northern Illinois will reset. Line change for the Illini with six minutes left. Pass too hot to handle for Nicholas Gonzalez. McDonald has to chase that one down alongside the captain Evans. Centering pass, able to be kept in alive. That one went all the way out to the point by Servin Anderson. A lot of traffic in front of that shot, but Mazurik still able to keep it. Again, he has done a great job with a lot of players in his way, whether by choice or by circumstance, whether a screen or just that's what you want to do to try and deny Northern Illinois the middle. Ben Mazurik has done very well with a lot of players in his way, keeping his possession and keeping his viewing lane of the puck. Back to neutral ice, able to turn that into something, Nick Anderson, the shot goes high. 
Right back to Alpi. Alpi looking for it. Backhand chance does not go from Verasi. Two good shots here from Illinois. Verasi takes it away. Backhand chance right in front, still alive. And again, Illinois trying to keep it alive. That's Nick Anderson. They've gotten very close to the crease into Caleb Cross, and that has brought the other black sweaters into the area. That's been the impetus for a lot of scuffles tonight. As Nick Anderson and Micah Maldonado are separated. Maldonado is led to the box, so it will be a power play for Illinois. Five and a half left in the second period. As now both teams are discussing things over. John Opilka quickly calling his players to the bench to talk things over as the linesmen sort it. Really the second time tonight, both teams have had an uncharged timeout. So pending the ruling of Maldonado in the box for two minutes, Illinois will have another power play. And again, in a game that had everything clicking last night, that really was the lone blemish for Illinois, the inability to capitalize on the power play. They didn't need it last night, and they haven't needed it tonight. But they'll certainly take another goal the way the Huskies have played tonight, the way they've applied the pressure on Ben Missouri. As now, Micah Maldonado has just headed to the locker room, and it appears his night is done. You can see Rodon Evans with both hands out at center ice pleading his case. That was an abrupt ejection. And one of this team's best spark plugs and the man responsible for their first goal of the season, Micah Maldonado, has an early exit. So for both games in this series, a black sweater ends up leaving early. Illinois has done a good job of establishing the physicality very early in this series. Right out of the gate last night, Northern Illinois responded and matched the physicality tonight. But at least as of right now, they seem to be on the short end of the stick. As they're sending out four players onto the ice against Illinois' five, a five-minute major charge to Maldonado. So with five and a half left in the second period, Illinois will have now about four minutes and 40 seconds, once this is all resolved, of a man advantage. Great time to cash in and to solve some of the power play woes that you've had through the first game and a half. Atticus Helfer moving in, he's harassed by two sticks. Odd angle has to circle back and go back to the point. Sends it back out to Nathan Dash. Dash has been a man at the top of the point. Ettingen a shot, redirected off the body of Alec Borzondek. The defense and the full body blocking for Northern Illinois has shined in this game. There's been a big reason why Illinois hasn't been able to get anything on the power play. That and the inability to receive passes like that as of late. Dash a shot, that does not go. Rebound chance does not go as well. Great, pesky defense, pesky play with the stick right there by Matt Martin as he's able to delay. But back now to Dash on the near side. Falling down, trying to stop that one was poor Zondek. He does temporarily as a fight for it. Pulled out to Bogdanov. Bogdanov sends it back. Matt Vive, Ettingen, Dash. Dash with it now. Back to Ettingen. One timer. He scores! <laughs> and there it is the first power play goal for the Illini on this season. And a team that suffered in that department last night now has some insurance. They've expanded it to a two goal lead. Gregory Ettingen, arguably the MVP of this team last season, has been all over the scoring tonight for Illinois. First, a quick goal right in front, then assisting on the Luke Alpi goal about 10 minutes ago and just now calling for it, emphatically calling for it on that near side. Great awareness by Nathan Dash. And again, the top shelf corner goals have seemed to hurt Caleb Cross in this game. Again, not many Metminders that can respond to those. 
but Cross with a frame, 6'3", 170. Good size for a goalie, just has to be a little bit quicker on those. So now Illinois has expanded their lead to two, and with this being a five-minute major, the power play's not going away anytime soon. As it's the top line on the ice right now, but with two defensemen, Harrison Slovic and Joe Dorian, respectively. An interesting look here, not just Ettingen and Dorian. Check that, not just Slovic and Dorian. But actually, you also have Luke Alpi on the ice. So Illinois is playing this power play with three defensemen. Now, granted, Alpi has a goal in this one. Dorian's become more offensive-minded as Slovic sends that one in, and that's redirected wide. So two somewhat offensive-minded D-men and a man in Dorian that has shot the puck. The more and more his career has gone on here at Illinois. But very interesting. That's the second time we've seen that tonight. A power play look for Illinois with three defensemen. Straying very far as Missouri nearly lost that one, ran into a collision. That was dangerous there. Illinois lucky that did not turn into a goal for the Huskies. But a far cry from the 4-1 overload fans were used to seeing under Nick Fabrini. Instead, three defensemen on the power play and David Ettingen and Sasha Matviev in a little bit of an umbrella formation here for Illinois with the three defensemen out wide. Nathan Dash has it, trying to shove it in. There was Matt Vieve. He's caused a lot of trouble right in front. And play is stopped. Two minutes, 20 seconds left on the man advantage. Tack on 30 more seconds to mark the end of the period. Illinois has added two more to complement Northern Illinois' one. Still vying for the faceoff, pulled out. And handling that one now, Dash. Dash with a shot off the pad. Rebound chance goes wide up the stick of Bogdanoff. Illinois looking to turn it around quickly. Ettingen back to Dash. Ettingen again looking for it, but instead Dash sends out to the near side. Quick passing, Dash a shot goes wide. Atticus Helfer rebound chance does not go. Helfer still able to hold on to it. Two minutes now on the five minute major. Helfer back to Ettingen. We've seen that chemistry blossom at the end of last year as Ettingen's shot just goes wide. The team trusting the defenseman, Nathan Dash, to put himself between Helfer and Ettingen. We talked about it at the beginning of this game. How would that chemistry between those two players be impacted on the power play? Started out slow, but Nathan Dash has proven from that last goal that he's the right man to be at the point. When Illinois is in the power play, and that line's on the ice. Pulled out to Bogdanov, quick shot. That goes wide off the glove of Cross. Helfer trying to gain a better angle, sends it in. Centering pass, Bogdanov can't handle it. As going down there was Matt Vieb. He took a stick to the shoulder. Illinois resetting, not done applying the pressure. They're not giving this defense any time to rest at all. Quick shot in, rebound chance. Rebound again, that does not go. Cross has played a very good game, minus those top shelf chances as Ettingen with a golden opportunity just sends it wide. Gregory Ettingen is making his home right in front there as that one goes. Ettingen is making his home on the near side. He is just waiting there and waiting there. And he gets it great high and eye with the ability to send up a one-timer. 30 seconds left on the minor penalty. Check that on the major penalty, the five minute major, that has given Illinois a goal. 30 seconds left in that and a minute left in the period. Into the netting, that one goes. Pop the stick of Atticus Helfer. So we've seen a bunch of power play formations from Illinois in this game. We saw three defensemen. That time we saw two defensemen, but again, the shift of Atticus Helfer to left wing this season, mimicking a little bit of the 4-1 overload there. So a lot of different combinations that John O'Pilka can turn to on the power play. Quick shot right there, saved off the body of Cross. And able to be cleared, nine seconds left on the minor penalty, 35 left in the period.
Handling that one now on the near side, feeding it into Nick Anderson. Anderson had a chance. Odd angle sends it back around, but it's taken and frozen by Cross. Anderson had a great angle there for a brief period of time, but then was bookended on either side by a black sweater. That's one he'll watch and film, and certainly wishing he had sent that shot a little bit sooner. As we're now back to five on five, Northern Illinois was able to kill the last three and a half minutes of that major penalty. Again, Micah Maldonado's night is done. This has been a very chippy game, and one which Illinois has caused a lot of problems right in front of Caleb Cross. That's been the impetus, the cause for a lot of fights, a lot of skirmishes tonight, as well as some hits on the boards, as that one sent back into the trapezoid. Six seconds left, five seconds left. And another 50-50 puck battle right in front. That does not go. And that will do it for the second period. Nearly a chance for a second goal there for Northern Illinois. But for the Huskies, you have to be thinking you were in a good spot to end the first period. You were playing very well. You were forcing the issue on the power play. You were great defensively. And 20 minutes now have gone by. Illinois tacked on two more. They found their groove on the power play. Arguably the last piece, the last weakness that they've displayed in these opening two games has been fixed, you can make that case. And so now you're down two goals. Not only has your opponent gotten better, you have a higher hill to climb. Familiar territory being down two for Northern Illinois. Three to one. The score off of goals from Gregory Ettingen, Luke Alpi, and for the Huskies, Nico Gonzalez. We'll be back shortly for the third period. Illinois up to.
Getting set for the third and final period of play here in a second in which Illinois tacked on two more goals and managed to expand their lead by one. The game has been increasingly physical, increasingly chippy. A lot of Illinois players, Sasha Matviv in particular, causing a lot of trouble right in front of the net. And that's led to some skirmishes, a few haymakers thrown, and a few five-minute majors in this game as well. But for Northern Illinois, you're in a worse spot now entering the third period than you were in the second period. The lead is expanded to two and your opponent has improved on what was perhaps their biggest weakness coming into this game, which was the power play. They have improved on that and they've constantly applied pressure on your netminder Caleb Cross in the form of hard to get for any netminder, hard to get shots from the top shelf. So how do you keep just to winning that neutral zone battle the way you did in the first period? Slow Illinois down, disrupt their momentum, disrupt their movement, disrupt their timing as they try and clear the puck. And you should win the neutral zone battle. Maybe be more aggressive too on the forecheck. After all, that and some sloppy Illinois play is what led to the lone goal in this game for Northern Illinois as they do look to apply the pressure now, taking that on the near side, that's Jeff Shirky. Shirky looking to get it back to the point, instead it's kept to that corner. Alec Bogdanoff looking to send it around for Illinois. It's caught in that corner there, Bogdanoff alongside Shirky, joining them, Harrison Slovic. Now back to the far side, Keaton Peters with it. Losing track of it is Martin, looking to clear it now is Alpi, and he does. Jim Franklin will kill some time. Illinois gets a line change. Franklin playing catch with his line mate on the other side, nearly leads to a turnover. Dangerous play there, but they do get it out and swing it to the far side. Waiting patiently, that's Evans with a shot. Save made, rebound Karams in front. And back to that corner now from Peters. Taking that one now is Shirky. Loses control of it, Matt Vive with it now, and he clears into the Illinois bench. So again, disrupt Illinois if you're trying to clear the puck. In the case of Northern Illinois, that's how you'll win the neutral zone battle. Just disrupt their timing so you can keep things on your side of the ice. They've applied a lot of pressure in the form of 28 shots on goal, but Ben Mazurik, but credit to the man who has earned his full-time number one slot for Illinois. He has played a great game tonight. Off a of deflection, Alexander Matviev gains the zone. The Huskies doing a good job of keeping him to the outside. Matviev still keeps it alive, fans on that shot, forces him to reassess, looking for a centering pass now. Back out to the far side, Dash with a shot from long range off the plexiglass. David Ettingen fighting for it in the corner, comes out to Joe Dorian in the neutral zone. Having to chase that one down now is Dash and a line change for Northern Illinois. Dash looking to work quickly on the near side because of that line change. Does manage to get it in, but Illinois has to go for one of their own now. Two minutes into the third period. Nico Gonzalez, the goal scorer, moving quickly now. As it kept to that near side, as a man goes plunging into the boards, Martin comes out looking for a centering pass, doesn't get one. Great defense right there by Gregory Ettingen. Sending that one close is Verasi. And Verasi has to chase that one down now on the near side in that corner. 50-50 puck battle for it, a two-on-two -two fray. Rossi and McDonough there, along with Nick Anderson, but it's taken by the Huskies and cleared just about the length of the ice, although it will go on goal, so no icing for that. Alex Leskai holding onto it now, harassed in the corner and brought down. McDonald there to help him out. And Nick Anderson with it now, moving quickly on the near side. Anderson, a nice pass into Joe Dorian. Back in front, and a shot does not go. Still alive, still alive in front in the high slot. Anderson, that pass does not go. Fresh off the bench, Bogdanoff has to circle back. 
A little bit of sloppy play from Illinois here in the neutral zone, but it's not denying them the ability to handle the puck. McDonough trying to go around, trying to center it. He does, but it goes all the way back out to the neutral zone, and Illinois has to tag up. Luke Alpi with it now off a stick. He'll try it again and get it into the northern Illinois zone. Now it's Luke March's turn to try and clear it. He's harassed on the boards by Bogdanov. March still with it, a nifty pass to send it into the trapezoid where the Huskies will now clear. Marks with it, a man on his sixth, that's Campisi. Again, Illinois forcing Northern Illinois to the outside. Both teams have done a good job of that today. Zimmerman has it poked away, dangerous clearing pass, but nothing Northern Illinois can do there. Alpi sends it across, Helfer fighting for it. And it comes out to Atticus. Elfer going through the legs of one man, finds Campisi. Campisi has two men to his left. Tries to do the same, tries to get nifty there and ends up costing him the possession. And Northern Illinois moving back to the other side. Having his stick lost was Alexander Matviev rushing now. That's the captain, Radon Evans. Evans trying to go through one man. He does, cannot go through the other, now has it in the corner. Harassed by a stickless Harrison Slovak. And it comes out to Matviev. Slovic and Alpi, the two defensemen on the ice for Illinois now, along with Alpi and the two Ettingen brothers. David has it now. Finds Joe Dorian fresh off of a line change who sends one in and bottled up by Caleb Cross. A quick five minutes to start period number three as some more jawing between the two teams at the blue line. A quick five minutes to start period number three. Probably an equal amount of pressure, you could say, applied to both netminders. Time running out again, and a bigger hill to climb. Down two goals for Northern Illinois. That one off the plexiglass, off the stick of Joe Dorian. Having to chase that one down, Keaton Peters and Anthony Verasi. Still in that trapezoid, Dorian tries to cut it off. and go, Instead, it goes through two legs. Chased down for it, taken now by Dorian. Got some help from McDonough. And now that's Verasi. Verasi gains the zone with a man to either side. Tried for the backhand. Instead, we'll try and get a better angle with the help of his teammate. Matt Vive cannot do anything there as he gets shoved into the boards. Now it's Nathan Dash's turn to chase it down. Great poke there by Patrick McDonough. Still vying for it in the neutral zone. Both teams are. Nathan Dash has to wait, wait. Bodies up a man to deny him the ability to gain that puck. And now Illinois will kill some more time. Nick Anderson a little slow getting back to the bench as Atticus Helfer takes it now. Helfer goes around a man trying for a centering pass. Still trying for one. Instead, he'll feed it off to Slovic. Slovic loses it, and it's back into the trapezoid now where Jim Franklin will look to reset. Franklin sends it right to a white sweater. Check that to an orange sweater in white numbering. That's Atticus Helfer. Helfer in a familiar spot. Centering pass does not go. That looks like a pinball machine as that one came off Peter Campisi. Now moving the other way, a two on two, Northern Illinois on the far side. Shot goes, save off the pad and frozen by Missouri. That one off the stick of Jason Clement. And again, a very quick moving third period, already six and a half minutes gone by. Something that does not bode well for the Huskies as they try and get two goals back. And again, we saw a lot of the front line, the top line in the first two periods. 10 minutes of ice time, arguably, in that first period. And we wondered, would it come back to bite them as off of a few deflections, Missouri swallows that one. We wondered, would playing that top line, would front loading their playing time come back to bite them? And roughly seven minutes into the third period, we haven't seen a lot of that top forward line yet for Northern Illinois. We may very well see them now, not by circumstance, but by choice, as they have a man advantage for the next two minutes. Joe Dorian has found his way into the penalty box, and so another power play chance for Northern Illinois. Deliberate, but productive in the first period. 
a little bit quicker at applying chances in the second. A great time now for them to get one back. Alec Porzondek with it, moves to his left, as Robbie Zimmerman. Again, it is the top line plus Zimmerman in the 4-1 overload. A common move they had, trying to find the man just to the left of the goal, the captain, Radon Evans, but that one does not go. And Porzondek has to chase that one down. That kills some more time on this Northern Illinois power play. Second line out on the penalty kill for Illinois. Two defensemen, that's Alpi and McDonald. Playing catch on the outside, shot in, deflected in front. Porzondek tried to screen Missouri and that deflection might have cost them. Porzondek back with it now. One-timer does not go off the pad and a great body block as well from McDonald. Evans has it now. Thought about moving in closer. Now trades places. Evans waiting, waiting. Sent a lukewarm pass in that Gregory Ettingen was able to clear. Line changes for both teams is moving on the near side, trying to handle that one for Zondick. It gets past him and it's a fight for him alongside McDonald. Jason Clement joins the fray as well. They're looking at, to get it back to Evans at the point. Evans plays catch, a quick give and go with Zimmerman. And Evans has it again, thought about it, deflected off the stick, but right to Porzondek. Porzondek looking to apply the pressure again. 30 seconds left on the power play, looking for a centering pass now. Looking again for a centering pass. Evans, Zimmerman does not go off the deflection. Illinois looking to clear it, and they do. A very nice clear from Atticus Helfer. Inside of 15 seconds on the power play in the last gasp here for Northern Illinois. It's Clement moving quickly, has it taken away by Anderson, and that will perhaps kill the rest of this power play. For about the first minute, Northern Illinois was set, they were attacking, but then Illinois did a good job denying them from getting set defensively. And now Illinois is looking to apply the pressure here, taking that one now and going into the boards off a man and some more drawing now, Nick Anderson right in the middle of it for Illinois. That's Anderson and Gonzalez that went into the boards. A delayed penalty coming now. Six on five until the puck is touched and Ettingen, the man responsible for that. So it appears Nick Anderson will go to the box for that hit. Right back on the power play, the Huskies are. And Illinois has certainly given their opponent no shortage of chances to tack on some goals with a man advantage. Of course, you could make the case that they're not floppy penalties. It, that is a consequence of being the rather physical team. The more physical team is you may have some penalties called on you. And so Illinois looks to clear and the burden of having a strong physical team is that you just need a great penalty kill and Illinois has shown one tonight. Robbie Zimmerman trying to change that as he gains the zone on the near side. Moving in has Jim Franklin right in front of him. Zimmerman a shot off the shoulder of Missouri. Great deflection right there and the ability for the Illinois netminder to send that one high. Evans, now he's on the outside. Trying to go in, great movement by Atticus Helfer to deflect that pass. They're forced to reset. Zimmerman moving in, moving in, shot, deflection, right in front, still alive in the low slot. Evans has to keep that one alive now and does. A minute 10 left on the power play as he takes a shot. An early deflection off the stick of Bogdanov and into the netting. We talked about the blocks in particular, the full body blocking from Northern Illinois in the first period. Now it's Illinois responding on the penalty kill with some blocks, with some sticks, with some great placement, particularly by Atticus Helfer on this last shift. So now the top line is off the ice for Northern Illinois. And the last time we saw that on the power play, the Huskies really struggled. They really struggled when that top line wasn't on the ice on the power play. As they look to reset now, the pass goes too long. And Brandon Weitzel has to chase that one down. It appears the struggles will continue. And again, that question comes up of, did they play the top line too much in the first period to the point that they can't be out now for the third period? 
a couple of shifts ranging around two minutes during some power plays and some man advantages in this game for that top line. Again, they were played heavily in the first period. Luke Marks with it now, now finds Clement. Clement looking for a shot, a lot of bodies in the way, but Mazurik still able to maintain contact. As a man gets shoved into the boards, that's David Ettingen. 10 seconds left on the power play, and Illinois will have killed two in roughly four minutes and 30 seconds. Again, a quick moving third period as Franklin looks to shoot. Last shot on the power play, centering pass, nobody there, and Luke Alpe clears it. Quick moving third period with eight minutes and 30 seconds left. Cross has to be careful as Anderson was right on his six. Northern Illinois looks to clear. Brandon Weitzel with it now, still holding onto it. It's in the neutral zone where it's taken now by Luke Alpe. Alpe in his own backyard, feeds it quickly, but Ettingen unable to handle that and he'll get called back to the bench. Again, you can kill time, you can wait for your players to get set, but when you're down two goals, you gotta move with a little bit more urgency if you're Northern Illinois. Illinois doing a good job denying them of any sort of ability to get set in the neutral zone. They're putting it in the O zone, but there's not much that can happen since. A rarity though there is they're able to make something out of nothing on that backhand chance. Evans gets harassed out of the neutral zone. Shot still manages to get close. They are doing a good job of turning something out of nothing here roughly in the last 30 seconds. That one fed back into the middle. Illinois lucky that there's no black sweater there to receive it and the puck is cleared. Inside of eight minutes left in the game, a lot of whistleless hockey tonight. And what has been a very physical game and a game dominated on both ends of the ice. Sent on around to the far side, Evans, a one on two, goes through the legs of one, finds another in front, but the backhand does not go. Rodon Evans doing some facilitating of his own. That's not the first time we've seen that out of the Husky captain tonight. Pass too hot for Atticus Helfer. Still manages to get in front with a couple of orange sweaters there. Now in the trapezoid, still looking for it. Sloppy play here from Northern Illinois, keeping the possession alive for the Illini. Atticus Helfer trying to capitalize on that. Keeping it in the offensive zone as the captain Bogdanoff swung around to the far side where it's taken now by Servan Anderson. Seven minutes to go and a quick moving third period. Not much Northern Illinois can apply close in on Ben Missouri. A lot of their shots in this period have been from the point. Evans trying to change that. Deflection off the stick of Dorian. Great job by Joe Dorian. Atticus Helfer with a chance now, but an odd angle as he gets sent down and hammered into the boards. A penalty is coming up as another man takes down the Husky responsible for that hit. The Illinois captain Alec Bogdanoff was not happy about that one. It was Peter Campisi who shoved the Husky responsible for that hit into the boards. It was Robbie Zimmerman going after Atticus Helfer and a good hit by Zimmerman. Helfer took an unfortunate fall that ended up with his head right on the side wall. Again, the nature of two physical teams is you will have a lot of penalties in this game. That's exactly what you have had. You've had a lot of skirmishes in front. Again, for Illini fans, it's been a sight for sore eyes. The physicality has sorely been lacking in years past. And a great sight to see that John Opilka has brought it back for this team. Certainly more benefits than drawbacks, but the drawbacks themselves are twofold. One, you have to have a great penalty kill, and two, you have to be able to take some hits yourself. Peter Campisi has gone into the box for the hit, for the tussle afterwards on the man responsible for the hit, and the man responsible for the hit as well. Check that, that's Ethan Koval, 58, rather than Robbie Zimmerman, 48. Ethan Koval is into the box. Koval in for five minutes, Campisi in for two minutes. So that does not favor well for Northern Illinois. The Illini will have three minutes of four on four, of, check that, two minutes of four on four hockey, two minutes of four on four hockey, and then three minutes of five on four. And that's a killer in particular for Northern Illinois because you do the math. 
Six and a half minutes left in this game. Six minutes, 20 seconds left. 427 off the clock when Campisi is out of the box. And then the time and then for the next three minutes, until a minute 30 left in the game, it's gonna be the power play for Illinois. That's an opportune time to pull your netminder and to try and get a goal back, but you'll be hamstrung for three of those four and a half minutes because you have a man in the penalty box. So perhaps that hit has cost Northern Illinois the ability to pull their net mind or a little quicker than they wanted to. As again, it will tick down to about four minutes, 30 seconds, and Illinois will have a power play for three minutes after that. So not favorable conditions for Brad Stoffers if and when he wants to pull his net minder, Caleb Cross. This has again been a very quick moving third period. Not a lot of whistles up until that hit on Atticus Helfer. Just as a precaution, won't be surprised if Helfer spends the rest of this game on the bench. Moving quickly now, but an odd angle. He has to circle back. That's Alec Bogdanov. Keaton Peters trying to make something happen. He cannot. Brought over to the near side. Peters with it now. Again, four on four. Four minute 15. Golden opportunity for Northern Illinois to get one back because for three minutes after that, it's five on five hockey. Illinois has done well with the blocking in this period. And right on cue, there it is. That was sorely needed for the Huskies. So pending a similar score now, they'll have a minute 30 as soon as Ethan Koval comes out of the box, they'll have a minute 30 to pull their netminder and to try and tack on one more. But that was a beautiful top shelf goal. Again, Illinois had kept them to the outside in this entire game. Something the Illinois defense loves to do. They had kept them to the outside and a lot of Northern Illinois shots as that one managed to get close to the back netting there. A lot of Northern Illinois shots had been from the point. There, that one went top shelf in on Ben Mazurik. A goal similar to the two we saw go top shelf in on Caleb Cross in the second period. Gonzalez with it now, right in front. That does not go. And play whistle dead right off of that. Not yet determined as to who scored that goal for Northern Illinois. But a big one indeed. 20 seconds left until Peter Campisi comes out of the box. Then the Illini will have three minutes of five on three. You do the math, you run the clock down until that five on, check that five on four expires, and you'll have a minute 30 left in the game. So a reduced time to pull your net minder if you're Brad Stoffers. And all you can do for the next three minutes is keep this one in the neutral zone. You can try for some shorthanded chances. Won't be surprised if they see a timeout after that minute 30 stops. Again, four minutes, 45 seconds left. 15 until it's a five on four game for Illinois. But again, all the attention right now is turning on when that power play for Illinois expires in three minutes and 15 seconds. What will happen? You can imagine the netminder gets pulled right away, a timeout's taken, and it's go time for the Huskies to try and get one back. They are controlling the possession for the most part here as Campisi is out of the box. So now a power play for Illinois as Atticus Helfer, fresh back into the game off of the injury, takes it. A good sight to see that all four of the players who have gone down and spent considerable time down have gotten right back up and into this game. So again, for the next two minutes and change, a five on four power play for Illinois. Nathan Dash with it now. Dash has been the man right at the point. That's a common thing we've seen. The Illini are trying to get it in to the man in the middle, trying to add some insurance. 
Gash with it, thought about going left, now does to Helfer. Right in front, rebound chance does not go. And the whistle blown, much to the chagrin of the crowd, perhaps prematurely. Three minutes, 50 seconds left, two minutes, 20 seconds left. Until Koval comes out of the box and it's go time for Northern Illinois. Meanwhile, for the Illini, in the context of the Illini, you can make the case that you need to put this one away now. An insurance goal certainly wouldn't help. You have two minutes and 20 seconds of man advantage hockey. You scored the last time you had the power play with this exact same unit on the ice. Right in front, trying for a deflection there was Matt Vivi could not get it. Atticus Helfer has it now, sends it back to Ettingen. Ettingen looking to get to his prime spot, looking to get a little bit closer. Has it now after playing catch with Dash. Atticus Helfer with it on the near side. Helfer shoots, does not go. A lot of bodies right in front. The goalie was screened, but there was plenty of bodies to deflect that shot. Helfer shoots from a similar location and it's blocked right in front. Beautiful play right there by Jim Franklin and credit to the Huskies. Their full body blocking has been on display all night tonight as that shot goes wide. Three minutes left in the game, a minute 30 left of the power play for Illinois. Gash with it now again, look for the Illini to be a little bit more deliberate. They're trying to find Ettingen on that near side, but Northern Illinois is crowding the puck. Centering pass does not go. Northern Illinois, as they are able to clear it, the Huskies are crowding that left side as Ettingen is trying to get a shot in there. That will be the end of his power play as a line change for Illinois. Now the second line is on. His brother David is there. Gregory actually was the holdover from the top line, so he is still on the ice. Perfect man to be a holdover there. Nathan Dash, another holdover as well. So an abbreviated line change that still has Gregory Ettingen right where they want him, but Northern Illinois is crowding him. They're shading that left side of the ice as he tries and gets shots off, and it's working thus far. The momentum swinging slightly in the Huskies' favor. Two minutes to go as Northern Illinois gets a line change. Luke Alpe trying to change that as a shot and a save out of thin air by Cross. So the momentum fluttering back and forth now in favor of Northern Illinois. They're shading Gregory Ettingen and that has been working marvelously. Illinois perhaps has to find another opportunity, another quick body Another quick stick to fire off a shot. Ettingen is out, so we shouldn't expect to see the shading continue, but credit to the Huskies. They've controlled the power play for roughly the last 20 seconds. Illinois trying to change that as a shot right in front, still alive in the slot, but it's taken now a two on three. Moving quickly, there is Evans, a one on three. Nothing he can do. Great poke check from the back by Harrison Slovic. Slovic's able to clear it. Eight seconds left, and the puck is ice. Eight seconds left on the penalty, a minute 34 left in the game. We have our eyes on Caleb Cross as a fresh set of bodies comes in, probably the last shift of this game as the rest of the top line comes onto the ice for Northern Illinois. It's Gonzalez, Martin, Borzondek, Evans, and Luke Marks. And a save made. And that was huge because the penalty expired and the clock stopped. A minute 26. And look who is coming to his bench. Caleb Cross coming to the bench for Northern Illinois. So that whistle, that freezing of the puck by Ben Mazurik was huge. You have a face off in your offensive zone and that allows you to clear your netminder. That was a huge whistle. And Northern Illinois now has 86 seconds to try and tie this game six skaters on the ice to five orange sweaters. Quick shot right there, does not go. Too many bodies in the way. Nat Viv trying to gain control of it. He's delaying, he's delaying. A 50-50 puck battle for it, a three on two. David Ettingen trying for it alongside his brother Gregory. It's pulled out to Gregory Ettingen. Ettingen waiting, has David. David in open lane, and he ices it. Twenty-six seconds into the pulling of the netminder. 
It's been all engines tonight for Illinois. Gregory with two and an assist, and his brother David with one to boot. Icing on the cake for the Illini, and a series sweep to come. Exactly one minute left on the ice. What a show the Ettingen brothers have put on. No surprise to see in the third period yesterday, John O'Pilka made the change and he put them on a line together. David plays right, Gregory plays left. David's a natural passer. Gregory, as we've seen tonight, has been a natural shooter from that left side. Loves to wait for those one-timers. He has two goals tonight and an assist. David again with the recent empty net goal. And a great resounding series sweep to open the year for the Illinois Fighting Illini. Again, two goals from Gregory, one goal from David, one goal from Luke Alpi as well. For the Illini, and again, strides made going from Friday to Saturday for Northern Illinois. The empty netter was ultimately the death knell at a point in the game where the momentum was shifting their way. They had just scored a goal very far from the outside. They were starting to control the power play. They had applied pressure on Missouri all game. Just on the wrong end of that one. Brad Stoffers might end up regretting the fact that he didn't take a timeout to come out with a set play out of that faceoff as the net is still empty with 45 seconds left. Still six on five right now for Northern Illinois. Any white sweater gets his stick on the puck and you have to imagine you know where it's going. As you have a few black sweaters crowding the puck right now, almost playing defense with their goalie out. It is sent over and just wide of the goal as diving for that one to try and contain it, Luke Marks. 20 seconds left. Northern Illinois with one last rush in them. It's Evans, the captain, who was quiet last night. Sends a shot wide. Quiet last night, but a contributor tonight. As the march continues for Northern Illinois to try and get those players involved. Again, a good showing tonight. A better one compared to yesterday. And the series for a win will continue. The quest for a win will continue as they take on Western Michigan next week. But for the Illini, quite the return to normalcy. The veterans have set the tone, both with physicality and with chemistry on the front forward line. The youth have followed the aggressive forecheck, the speed, and the veterans have come to form as well. Great to see everything clicking for this team and for John O'Pilka the new head coach in his first series behind the bench. What a better way to celebrate your 21st birthday than with a series win in your first two games as a head coach. We'll be back next week for when the Illini take on Division II Michigan State. The score from this one, 4-2. Four 41 shots for the Illini, 40 for the Northern Illinois Huskies. The difference in this one the Ettingen brothers making the difference as well. A great defensive clinic and a great physical one as well. We will be back next week as we thank our entire broadcasting crew. See you next week as the Illini take on Michigan State. George Corey signing off.